Welcome in, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Miss Charm School Podcast. I'm your host, Sunday Eli. Today, I have with me the beautiful Christy. Crystal Bailey, excuse me, of the Etiquette Institute out of Washington, Washington, D.C. Crystal, how are you doing today? I am fabulous. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yes, so happy to have you. So we want to get right in. We talked a little bit before about being more ladylike in business. Can you give me, from your perspective, what does that even look like? Sure. Um, it's been really interesting because I, you know, have been teaching etiquette for about the last 10 years and things have evolved and changed the way that I, you know, speak to young women um, and the way that I speak to um, adult women as well when it comes to uh, femininity and what to bring um, in the professional environment. And I think we have the advantage of bringing a balance of both. Um, femininity and a strength and power. And so I'm always thinking about when I'm working with young people, if I can tell you how to sit elegantly, and that is wonderful if you're sipping a tea, sipping tea, you know, on a porch in the South, um, but might not be as great when you are running a business, right? And you are sitting at the head of a boardroom table. And so we just need to know how to do both and to work both sides and both angles. Um, And that's what's kind of important to me. And to me unique that uh, we have the ability to, to play both sides. And so are there any specific tips that you give people that come to you uh, that are looking for help and support in being more ladylike in business? Maybe if you can give us one or two small tips of things that we could do. You know, people appreciate uh, the handwritten note. Um, the, the fact that you, um, you know, listened to me in conversation and you, you know, maybe inquire about how my family was doing or um, something that I might have mentioned in a previous conversation. So again, kind of those attention to details, making sure that we're, you know, truly listening to others, um, being empathetic as well. Um, so a lot of this kind of goes into emotional intelligence and those are very important skills that we want to have um, as we communicate professionally. Love that. And how did you actually get into helping people have uh, more grace in their everyday lives and good manners? Yeah, I, um, I was actually in law school at an etiquette dinner and uh, the woman was going on and on about um, etiquette. And I was like, hmm, that's what I should be doing. So I quit law school and no, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. Okay. I'm so um, okay. Okay. Come on with that. Um, no, I, I finished school, but I said, um, you know, once I get back to DC, that I would get started and try to do that in tandem with a law career. And um, I did try to do that for a very long time. Thankfully, I'm, you know, fully running uh, the etiquette company at this point, um, which is just my passion and my joy and something that I look forward to waking up to every day. Um, so, yes, I started off thinking that I wanted to work with young people for sure, but also with professionals, um, college students. And that's kind of my sweet spot with working with young professionals or people working on their branding for businesses and professional development in that sense. Love that. I love that. I love that. And tell us a little bit more about the courses or classes that you offer for people that are interested in working with you. Absolutely. So since we've been virtual um, for this last year, and really in the past, um, etiquette companies would never have offered virtual trainings. It just kind of was something that was not done in a very in-person, hands-on type of business. So um, it's exciting now to see and have a reach that's kind of um, even more international um, with clients. But I have a a really fun five-week course for adults that um, covers everything from social graces and savoir vie, so how to sit and stand and move with elegance and grace. And um, so we start off kind of talking on the social side about social graces, and then we go into executive presence and then business etiquette. um, And we cover even bespoke tailoring and kind of the details in our tailoring. Um, we have like a wine experience as well. And so mm-hmm. um, we all we round all of that up with fine dining etiquette, um, which is a fun topic for me. Yes. And what would you say are maybe the most 
common misconceptions for people that are watching this who feel like, well, I'm polite, you know, I say bless you and thank you. And uh, what are some of the areas of having good manners and practicing etiquette that we overlook that are actually really important? Yeah. Um, so there are good manners, right? And home training that hopefully <laughs> many of us have received um, growing up. And then uh, there's etiquette. So kind of these social rules that have developed. And then there's also protocol, which might be very specific to your industry um, or an organization that you're a part of. And I just think it's so important. Sometimes we pass off the rules of protocol or the rules of etiquette. And I'll give an example. I was, um, it seems a little sad, but I, I was going to a funeral of a mentor of mine. And for the, the ceremony for my sorority, we had to have a white suit and um, I, and this was many years ago, but I um, headed down to Richmond because that's my hometown. And I got down there and my grandmother had a white suit waiting for me. It was one of my suits, but she had it. And I was like, perfect. I'm gonna just throw that on and head on over to the, to the service. And I get there and uh, the women tell me I cannot participate. And I am just devastated and I'm in tears and I'm like, this is my mentor, this is my mentor. Um, you know, I came all the way down here. I can't believe that I'm not, why? Mm -hmm. And I had a white suit on, but it was a pantsuit. And you actually had to have on a skirt suit. And in that moment, I just couldn't understand how this one little rule, you know, would really affect me. But when we think about protocol, you know, we have rules in place. Sometimes they make no sense at all. And sometimes they make great sense but the importance of the rules that we have set as a society, set as an organization or set professionally and going by them. Um, and so that was a tough lesson, of course, for me to learn, but it also really gave me a sense of the importance that a lot of times, even you know, when you go to a church service or you're asked to wear something specific and you are like, oh, well, this is kind of like what it is, right? Um, you know, there's a, a, a reason for uniformity um, to bring people together and, I. I just learned my lesson of, of not um, of paying attention to the details and understanding the importance of protocol and etiquette in a situation like that. And then I wanted to make sure to ask you with your classes, what are some of the takeaways that you feel people, or maybe the largest area of transformation for people when they finish your course? Because I know there are gonna be people watching that are gonna look you up, that are interested in working with you. And so they wanna know, you know, what am I going to learn? So what do you think would be some of those larger areas of transformation for graduates of your courses? Yeah, um, one topic that seems so simple, um, but we don't think a lot about the way that we move and what that says about us. Um, whether it be socially or um, professionally, like our body language and um, even the way that you, you walk across the room, are you doing that with command and with purpose? And so um, something that I geek out with uh, <laughs> my students um, and participants is talking about our effort patterns. So how we actually move within a space and grab and the gravitas that that also brings as well. And you know, who do you want in a position of power or leadership, but someone that has gravitas and someone that moves and seems in command and control. And so I think that's a big overarching idea that weekly we have assignments of thinking about our particular movements that we're doing. Um, and I think that's a big takeaway that people are able to use forever and ever to kind of put that into their professional selves and their executive presence. Awesome. And lastly, before I plug all of your socials and your website and ask you to give us all the juicy details, are there any books or people that you look up to or that you would recommend for people who are maybe just getting started and they kind of want to get an idea of, well, let me try to take a deeper look into etiquette and learn some of the things that I'm unaware of right now. Where would you tell them to go? Sure. Um, there's a wonderful book. Um, that I enjoy, which helps me to think about how I phrase things, um, <laughs> whether to bring up that quite burning question you might have in a social um, situation and maybe you should refrain from it. And it's as a lady would say, um, goodness, and I don't have the author's name um, in my head, but it's as a lady would say, it's a beautiful pink cover to it, uh, but it just kind of gives you little tips for everyday scenarios and how to maybe wiggle out of some of those um, tough situations with the correct thing to say. Love that. 
and you must let us know where we can find you online and your social handles as well. Absolutely. Um, please check me out in our upcoming courses at WashingtonEtiquette.com and on social media, on Instagram and Twitter at Common Curtsy. Common Curtsy, guys. <laughs> Go follow her right now, all right? Any upcoming exciting projects that you may be working on that we should look forward to? Ah, it, we'll have an exciting event. I don't know. Um, <laughs> are you into caviars? I'm not, but I can get into it. <laughs> I haven't really been into them either, but I, so, which is why I wanted to host the class. And so I'm always looking for kind of one-off unique topics to okay. cover. So I have a fun, the Art of Caviar event coming up um, in April. And so um, we're shipping out caviars from Pearl Street Caviar to our participants. And we'll do like fun tastings and, and pairings with that. You can maybe even try it with a potato chip. That's awesome. That's super exciting. And we can find out more information for that on your website. Absolutely. WashingtonEtiquette.com. WashingtonEtiquette.com. All right. You heard it here first, everyone. Thank you so much, Crystal, for your time. I really appreciate it. And we will be speaking soon. Thank you. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Ms. Nadia Kabongo, who is a etiquette consultant of Allure Consulting, her own company where she helps people have good manners and have an elegant mindset in business and in life. So without further ado, Ms. Nadia. I'm pretty good. Thank you so much for having me here. Such an honor for me that you actually contacted me for this. I'm very happy. Yes, yes. So let's get started. You are definitely a globe trotter. Tell us a little bit about where you are right now and how that may in fact impact your etiquette, your etiquette teaching. Uh, the teaching etiquette. Yes. Also, you mean I'm uh, talking about the background in etiquette, etc. Yes. Yeah. Um, I started back in 2015. I, uh, I was just interested. I was just passionate about good manners and etiquette, and I was reading a lot about it. And then you reach, uh, reached that point where I felt like I wanted to know more, but I uh, pretty much read pre everything that I could read. So I decided to uh, uh, take a course. So I took an online course and uh, that, would, that was without, uh, the, the aim wasn't to become a consultant. It was just to know more about it. And then since I got it and I became a consultant, I said, okay, so I can just uh, share about it on my Instagram. My Instagram page was just a, a private one, you know, personal staff and whatever. And then I started a little bit by sharing etiquette tips and stuff. And I saw that the audience was uh, asking more about it. Mm. So I thought, okay, why not? So I jumped in and, uh, and I decided that I will use this diploma that I got and teach etiquette. So I started to give online lessons, one-on-one -on -one lessons when I was teaching um, people in Canada because I used to live in Canada at that time. Then I came back to France in 2018, and that's when I decided to um, to to have a, a training in a, in French etiquette because there's a little bit of difference between North American and French etiquette. Uh, actually, you have etiquette anywhere in the world. You know, it's different in Africa. It's different in Asia. It's different in North America. I think for our listeners who maybe never thought about etiquette and they've never thought about the relation with etiquette and good manners to self-confidence. How would you make that bridge for them? Um, maybe with an example of something we could talk maybe about posture and something as simple as good posture and how that impacts how people see you, how you self-present yourself in the world. If you could just help our listeners make that bridge between good manners and why that actually matters, maybe an example in everyday life. You know, um, I'll take my own example because I wasn't born with uh, knowing etiquette and all the good manners. I had to learn them. And even though I, I came from, a, I would say, a family that, you know, care about others, et cetera, you know, we learn all, we all learn to say thank you and please, et cetera, but you would want to know more, a little more. 
And I decided to start my journey when I was in my 20s, I think a little earlier than that, like 17 or 20. And, um, and I saw the differences. I actually felt the difference in the way people were was talking to me or looking at me, mm-hmm. and they were treating me with more respect. Um, it, and I think the work started, I started with just the way I was dressing and the posture, just the way you dress and the posture. If you work on that first, you would see a differences, a big difference in the, in the way people approach you. And the reason why it's because we always say that we shouldn't judge the book by the cover, but unfortunately we are human beings. I mean, I shouldn't say unfortunately, but <laughs> we are human beings and we see with our eyes first and it takes only seven seconds for someone to make assumptions about you Mm -hmm. and it's something normal all human being will be asking like the brain will first ask you if if i see you the very first seconds i will i will think is this person reliable is this person respectable can i trust this person those are the question your subconscious mind is wandering and you will provide the answer with with your first impression, with the way you dress, not only the way you dress, but also your posture, how you stand, your attitude and the way you talk. So those are the features that you should be working on, everything that you see the outside. But I always tell my students, it's very good to work on the on the inside on the outside but if you don't work on the inside as well it's um it's a it's it's a you, you're not gonna go very 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 far actually yes definitely and i think here with uh, miss charm school podcast we or me basically as the host really <laughs> stress internal development and growth and so mm. i know that um our ladies are always working on themselves internally. It's that we got to polish up a little bit of our external (laughs) to match up (laughs) with the diamond that we are internally. And so speaking of that, I wanted to get some feedback from you as to what are some ways that you feel like ladies today might just be doing it wrong, specifically when it comes to style. Um, I love that you talk about having a timeless style. So I would love to know in your words, what is a timeless style and what are some areas where we're kind of missing the mark right now? Yes. So two things. Um, I like to tell people that you shouldn't follow trends. It's not, uh, that's what I mean by timeless. If you choose something timeless, you don't have to you don't have to to um, to be exactly like Jackie Kennedy or Audrey Hepburn. I mean, those are real inspirations. I get it. Grace Kelly, I love them. I mean, I mean, they've been a they've been a great inspiration for me. But that's that's it actually. They should stay inspiration. You should um, never forget to add a little bit of yourself in your style. So timeless doesn't mean that you have to look stiff and conservative. You have to be comfortable. And if the way you dress, uh, when you look at, at the mirror before you leave the house, if you feel like you are wearing costume, then there's something wrong. But if you actually feel absolutely fabulous and you're you're feeling yourself like we say um then that's it so it it might take a little time but try not to be too much influenced by um i would say the trend because the fashion is just uh something i mean i have nothing against the fashionistas i mean some of uh, of the women our fashion is does because they love fashion and uh, and they have the budget to follow it but that's just it like it's it's a uh, it's a budget you have to you have to change all the time like the trends uh, dies but the style remains as uh, I think it was Karl Lagerfeld who said that I can remember but anyways you get the point <laughs> I'll give you five items for my wardrobe okay. like I really there are timeless that I will always have um the trench basic trends trench uh the beige one the black ballerinas uh what else do i have i have a sweater a cashmere sweater that goes with everything um what all the the white shirts 
uh, that looks it looks corporate, but it also can look very classy with a you know with a, a lovely pearl necklace. And uh, I'd say the little black dress, even though I try not to wear black so much because I like colors, mm -hmm. but the, the little black dress will do as well. Like sometimes it really, really helps when you when you don't have anything in you in your mind or you don't really know what you want to wear. The black dress, the black dress always does. Yeah. And that's a great point too. Um, I totally understand the desire to have color in your wardrobe. So what do you mm. think actually is a good balance for that? Because I think um, there's definitely sort of a reputation, reputation in corporate that at least here in the United States, that color sometimes is a bit bold. And um, I definitely feel like, I don't think it ever sends the wrong message, but it definitely kind of feels risque I think but I think there are a ton of people that love color and love expressing themselves in their fashion and so in your opinion what would be that good balance would it be you know um I don't know navy with like a pop of color and a scarf like what are ways that women can incorporate color who love color in their wardrobe if they love color, but they, they don't want to dare too much, they can still wear black. I have days like that where I wear um, like a, a turtleneck, a black turtleneck, but I would add um, statement earrings, like jewelries that are bright, full of colors or very sophisticated. Well, I have one <laughs> right now, but, or, um, or you can just, uh, if you want to wear like something, either the top or the bottom that would be black, choose another, like a purse, maybe a purse that would be a pop of color, any pop of color actually. But I like the fact that you can play with the accessories as well. Like you said, the scarf is a great idea. Okay, wonderful. Mm -hmm. And perfectly, again, setting me up so amazing in this interview. <laughs> I wanted to talk to you about um, the difference between a purse, clutch, and a, hand and a handbag. Please break it down for us. Great. So the clutch is really for a uh, cocktail dinner. You, you don't really put any, much things in there. It's more for uh, formal attire. But sometimes I like to break uh, a casual outfit, outfit with a clutch. Mm -hmm. So that works too. Um, you've probably seen it on Instagram. I did a post about that. But a purse is, uh, is actually a handbag. A purse is more um, this little pouch where you put your coins in it, your change, sorry. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and a handbag is, is your handbag what we call the purse, I guess, in North America. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, so that's the difference. So usually you shouldn't be calling a purse a handbag. Uh, I mean, a handbag, a purse, a handbag is a handbag. Gotcha. <laughs> Setting us straight. So everybody, the record yeah. has been set straight. Okay. Don't call your <laughs> handbag your purse. <laughs> Let's start there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I want to switch gears for a little bit and talk about uh, your womanhood in terms of you being a mother of two and then also being a wife. And I wanted to ask you, how does etiquette and good manners impact your personal life at home? So much. It did so much. Um, when you realize that etiquette is not only for the people outside, you actually want etiquette is showing respect um, to yourself first, but also to the others and in your, the way you're talking, but also in the way you behave, the way you react. And um, I have to be honest with you, I didn't apply etiquette first with my husband. I was applying etiquette outside. And then I realized that well, you have to apply it everywhere, in every settings, in every part of your world, of, of, of your life. And I saw the difference because now after, I mean, he, he always had been a gentleman, but once I decided to actually apply etiquette in my own house, very like adding it in my in my day-to-day -day life, he changed into this... I don't know, best gentleman. Like he had this best 
behavior all the time like and i actually like it and it pushes me to be more of a lady so i don't know it's like we, we kind of pushing each other like he's more a gentleman and now i'm more of a lady with him and uh and i actually like it it's it's more peaceful and it's actually agreeable in the house now mm -hmm. i love that and so for our married ladies what are one or two things that you feel like really helped move your relationship in that direction if you don't mind sharing absolutely um to move in that direction well i would uh i would talk to him with um with a soft tone of voice when we have arguments when we disagree on something because i realized that whenever I go outside and I disagree with someone, I would just like pose, try to understand their point of view and spoke in a softly voice to calm down and appease the tension. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't doing necessarily with my husband. And then I switched it and I said, okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing. And whenever we disagree on something, I'm like, okay, I'm posing, trying to understand this point of view because it's not because it's my man that I, actually know absolutely everything about him mm -hmm. we tend to assume that we know what is going is going to answer or we know what he is feeling but the thing is not necessarily mm -hmm. we can actually learn about our spouse like many many years after yeah. many many years after. so that was the greatest point i think yeah yeah i love that because i've always um shared with friends of mine, uh, they will give me the feedback sometimes like, well, I should be able to be myself, you know, with you or people will say that too in relationships like, well, I don't need to, you know, be on here, mm -hmm. you know, in this relationship. That's for my business life. That's for my outer world experiences. But I 100 percent agree with you. I think sometimes the people that are closest to you may need that side of you even more because you're interacting mm -hmm. with them more often. You know, they do kind of see all sides of us, our wonderful yes. sides and our not so great <laughs> sides. Not so great. Exactly. Yes. And so I think that being able to have that grace in the home um, or even with your friends is so important um, because they're mm -hmm. the people that are around us the most. So I love that point. I think that's excellent. And then with your children, what are some things that you feel like um, you are helping to instruct them with in terms of good manners? I was about to say that okay. is that now that um, interactions with my husband are more civilized, I would say, I would I'm not saying that it were uncivilized, but now that it's really civilized in a way that we are talking like real matured people who love each other, I I see that the my daughters can see what a couple looks like, like a strong couple looks like. It looks like two people who are able to agree to disagree sometime but still can love each other and show respect and love to each other. And that's all I want for them. I just want them to be able to say, okay, you can affirm yourself. You can, you can, you can be what you want. You can say and think what you, you want. You have your own opinion, but you also can respect the opinion of others without going into a feud. That's exactly that. Um, the thing that I'm trying to do with my girls also is to, um, to understand that uh, they they need to have compassion for others because um, I don't know like they they might have parents that love them very very much but outside some some kids can go through different things and uh, and sometimes the attitude of people is just a reflection of the the bad feeling that they may have because of bad experiences that we don't know nothing about mm -hmm. so that's another thing i want i want them to understand but respect is a great great point i love that and then just to kind of wrap up here i wanted to definitely mention your courses on your website yes. allure etiquette and i really wanted to kind of frame the question like this for people who have worked with you in the past what mm -hmm. are some of their largest in your opinion their largest areas of transformation so that the listeners who are interested in working with you can kind of have that in mind that these are the areas that i'm going to grow and transform in 
Well, they always, um, the feedback I always have is that people are treating them with more respect and they can't like, like ladies, they are treated like ladies after a couple of months in the program. And, uh, and they really, really appreciate for some reason, the fact that the transformation and the, uh, uh, the transformation, the physical transformation, I mean, the out, outside, uh, all the tips that they can receive to get the, the outside transformation. And I'm actually glad, I'm so happy for them because I see, I see women getting empowered and they, it's like they, they had it mm -hmm. inside of them since the beginning, but they just needed the key. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think that's what, it, what the program provides is the key for, for these women to, to say, okay, I am this woman, I've decided to be that woman and the world will know about it. Love that, love that. Mm -hmm. And so tell us a little bit about the courses. You have three, I believe. Yes. A little briefly about that. Yeah. Yeah. So you have Manners for Your Career, which is um, more centered for people who want to, to really uh, succeed in their work, in their career. So you have tips for interviews, um, how to deal with uh, some dramas at work, etc., how to be poised, etc. But you always have the same skeleton, how to be a lady. And then you have the manners for your career, so which is more for work. And then you have um, the Call Me Lady one, which is a program for young ladies usually, but you can take it at any age you'd like. Um, it's everything about etiquette, dining etiquette, um, your clothing transformation. So I will go through your wardrobe with you, see how you want to dress, how uh, giving you the tips to help you uh, develop your own style and, um, and also work on your, on your manners, the way you talk, uh, the first impression, etc. cetera. So, um, the other program, the first uh, call me, uh, the first lady effect program, sorry, okay. um, is actually the same program as the call me lady etiquette, but a more comprehensive one. It, it go, we go deeper in personal development. And so where can we find you online and connect with you online? And are there any upcoming new projects that we can look forward to from you? Well, I have, uh, so my website is uh, allureetiquette.com. You can find me on Instagram as well at madame.kabongo. Uh, and uh, right now I put a pose on my projects because I, uh, I'm taking care of my very little one. She's only five months, but I continue to do the courses. And, um, and I have a seminar. I've been invited to speak to a seminar for young ladies. Um, in kind of an introduction to etiquette for the long the and elegance as well for young ladies in Belgium, hoping that it will actually happen, you know, with this sanitary uh, situation. Um, and I still I still do the um, the uh, association thing for India, the students in India. Um, but right now, yeah, I put a pose on everything. But you'll see me um, back in September doing great thing, I guess. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. So be sure to visit alloreetiquette.com and to connect with you on Instagram at madam with an e dot kabongo. Um, yes. So thank you so much, Nadia, for taking the time to speak with me. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you so much. <laughs>